Hey, it's Vicky, and I'm back with a flicks and lit video. I looked, and I haven't done a flicks and lit video since last summer. So, we are overdue, guys. And today, I'm going to be talking about some film adaptations of The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. So, as you guys know, if you are familiar with my channel recently, I did a vlog where I read The Haunting of Hill House for the first time. And so having watched the Netflix series uh, when it came out a couple of years ago, I thought it would be fun to not only rewatch that series, but to also watch the two film adaptations. Uh, there's one that came out in 1963, and then the second one came out in 1999. They're both called The Haunting. And so I went ahead and watched all of those so that I could kind of compare them to Shirley Jackson's book and then kind of just discuss it. So for those of you that don't know, The Haunting of Hill House is about a group of people that go to this haunted house to sort of do a study about just like the paranormal and of course the house is haunted and things happen to them. Specifically, the book centers around a woman named Eleanor who is especially affected by this house. So I guess I'm gonna, well, the way I'm gonna break this down is I think I'm gonna break it down by like different kind of uh, aspects of the, of all three and kind of talk about all three and kind of break it up that way. I think that's gonna work out well. So first of all, let's just go ahead and first just talk about the, just kind of the adaptation um, in terms of the plot. And I think that if we're gonna go in order, let's go in order. Let's start with the 1963 version, uh, which in my opinion, was perfectly done as far as an adaptation goes. It follows the book pretty much to a T and all of it. I think even down to some of the descriptions of the house in terms of like where bedrooms and bathrooms are in relation to each other and things like that. Uh, there's definitely, it's definitely taken into account when that movie was made and the set was designed that they kind of went back to the source material and got a lot of their info from there. And then I think I think as a as a whole, uh, anything that they did change or leave out was kind of inconsequential. So again, it followed the plot pretty much to a T. It was solid. Going into the 1999 adaptation, they definitely took some liberties uh, because uh, what they, the kind of um, way that they took, the approach they took was in the original book, there is a family, the family that built the house was the Crane family. And you get a little bit of a backstory on them uh, because in turn their story is the house's story really. And so they took some liberties though in the 1999 version with that backstory with the Cranes. And to be honest with you, I wasn't a huge fan of it. It was just it was like almost too complicated and and it, not that it was complicated it was just too much i think and then also there was sort of a and i'm not going to get into spoilers sort of maybe a twist um with the history of the house as it relates to the people in the current time who are staying there um that was to me i was just like no 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 and then the other odd thing that they changed in the 1999 version was that in the original book and in the 1963 movie, the people that are going there to do this study, they know why they're there. They know that they are there uh, because the house is known to be a haunted place and they're there to kind of see what sort of paranormal things happen and how it affects them uh, because they have kind of been, they themselves are a little more attuned to the paranormal other than luke sanderson who is one of the characters who's at the house he's basically there because his family currently owns the house and so he's just kind of there you know um but that wasn't the case in the 1999 version he was just like a random person who, as well but in the in the 1999 version for some reason the doctor that was doing this whole study decided to tell the people that they were there for a sleep study and like why would why would you go to like a big old haunted house <laughs> to do a sleep study instead of just telling them why they were really there which I don't understand why they did that I thought that was kind of weird and then the Netflix adaptation I should just go ahead and say right off the bat that it's nothing like the book other than 
in plot other than that like it takes place in a house called Hill House and the characters are named after characters that were in the book but are nothing like the characters in the book if that makes sense. So he just basically Mike Flanagan the creator director or whatever of that show just took the names and assigned them to his characters and he kind of wrote his own story with Hill House being the center of it though I will say he definitely took some elements from the story like different sort of themes and even like um, symbols that you kind of saw or kind of iconic um, events um, and used them in his series so it was so he still really paid homage to the original text and even to the 1963 movie because I noticed when I watched the movie I watched the Netflix series I've watched it twice now so I watched but when I did when I decided to do this video I watched that one first and then watched the 1963 movie and the kind of scene where you walk in where Eleanor first walks into the house that set where you walk into the house and you kind of are in this big open area and there's the big staircase going up is the same in the Netflix series so it was almost like he was kind of giving a nod to the film there just the layout of that like kind of first floor entryway of the house was very similar so I thought that was cool and then there's other things like the creepy spiral staircase in the library that you see in all three adaptations um, other things like the kind of famous scene where it's whose hand was I just holding um, all like those kinds of things little things he put in his adaptation so even though the plot was completely different I thought he did a good job of paying homage to the story and it was a fantastic story I absolutely loved that series so I can't really talk to it as a, like an adaptation it was more inspired by the um, the book and not like a strict adaptation so for me the haunting 1963 was even on its own as a film if you're not looking at it as a adaptation of a book it was a very solid spooky movie uh, because just like the book it uses subtlety and sort of uh you never really see anything even when you're reading the book the the characters don't see any ghosts they don't nothing like that happens it's all like noises that they hear um banging on the walls uh doors closing by themselves or kind of flexing in the frame and just that overall sort of uneasy kind of feeling was also what The Haunting 1963 did. And so for that reason, it was a fantastic movie because it used very, very little <laughs> special effects or anything. It was all just about creating a mood and the, and the actors sort of carried you through showing you their reactions to what was happening and it made it a solid, like a solid movie. Whereas The Haunting 1999, went all out with the special effects. It was just almost ridiculous how much <laughs> CGI and stuff they used in this movie. Don't get me wrong, it's impressive. Some of the stuff, especially for being 1999, um, for being a movie that's over 20 years old, uh, it was that the special effects were fine, but you didn't get that same feeling because you saw the ghost. You, you, you got the noises and all that sort of stuff. But then like you saw the ghosts and you saw like all this weird stuff going on in the house and it was just it was a little bit over the top. I I think what made the book and the 1963 movie such a strong horror story was because it was quiet and it left a lot to your imagination and the 1999 movie did none of that. As far as casting goes in the movies, um, Julie Harris plays Eleanor in the 1963 version and she nailed that character. She was exactly how she was in the book which I have to say like when you're reading the book Eleanor is not exactly a likable character she has a lot of flaws and she's not always the most personable or nice person especially to the other people the further you get into the story because she becomes more and more isolated and just more and more unpleasant really and so I think Julie Harris just nailed that and was like pretty much perfect and in the 1999 film Lily Taylor plays Eleanor and though she did a good job at sort of showing how Eleanor becomes more and more like attached to the house and kind of infatuated with it 
I felt like, and I feel like this a lot about her, I love her as an actress. Like, I absolutely loved her in The Conjuring. Um, she's been in a lot of movies that, where I, I really like her as an actress, but she is so likable and so sweet. I feel like she always comes across as just very sweet. And Eleanor was just not sweet. And so I just think that maybe she was a little too a little too likable, honestly. And then uh, the other one of the other main characters was Theo, who is a woman who is staying at the house for this study. And in the 1963 version, Claire Bloom plays her, and again, nailed it down to just the way she looks, the way she walks, the way she interacts with um, Eleanor, Theo and Eleanor in the movie have a lot of time together, and I thought that they were great together. Um, in the 1999 movie, it's Catherine Zeta-Jones who plays her, and I thought she also did a pretty good job, um, but I don't know if if her and Lily Taylor's chemistry was the same um, as Julie Harris and Claire Bloom. I felt like Claire and Claire and Julie were a, were a better were a better duo in that regard. And then like, I think I mentioned him earlier, Luke Sanderson, who is in the in the book and in the 1963 version, he is a family member of the family that owns the house. And he's played in the 1963 version, he is played by Russ Tamblin, who it was really interesting to find out that he actually does make an appearance in the Haunting of Hill House Netflix series. He plays um, Nell's therapist. Uh, so it's a it's a small part, but I thought that was really cool that he um, took part in that in that series, um, being that he was in the 1963 movie. And then in the 1999 movie, Owen Wilson plays Luke. And like I said, Luke in the 1999 version, he is not a family member. He's just like a random person. Uh, and I thought that was interesting because, you know, Owen Wilson is just not known to be in horror movies. He's more of a comedian and in funny stuff. So it was kind of weird to see him in that role. But that role also across the board is kind of a more a role that was there kind of for comedic relief, so I guess it made sense that they cast someone like him. So all in all, I think that if I had to rate these, I can't really rate the Netflix adaptation because like I said, it's so, so different from the book um, that I can't really compare it uh, other than to just say that I thought Mike Flanagan did a good job of taking what he felt inspired by when he read that book or maybe even saw the 1963 movie and using it to create his own story. Uh, it was just very well done. But if I had to compare the 1963 and the 1999 movie, I would definitely say the 1963 is the better film um, across the board, not just adaptation-wise, just film-wise. Uh, it's just a classic horror movie, in my opinion, and was just very, very well done, while also doing justice to the uh, original work, the source material. And so... I think the 1999 movie just really suffered from, for some reason, wanting to have a lot of like just crazy special effects and like action-y type scenes where like things are exploding and like a lot of running around and stuff and you just, it just missed the point for me. So I would say if you are looking to want, you want to watch an adaptation of The Haunting of Hill House, watch the 1963 movie The Haunting. Um, because it's really good. It is. It's really good. And then, yeah, watch The Haunting of Hill House, the Netflix series, because even though it's totally different, it's amazing. Uh, honestly, I could have done without watching the 1999 movie, and I don't know if it's because I watched, like, the Netflix series and then the 1963 movie, and I watched that one last, that, like, those two were so good that, to me, the 1999 one was just not... It was not up to par at all. So I, I, I would say you could probably skip that one and it would be okay. You'd be okay if you didn't watch that one. All right, so let me know down below if you've watched any of these adaptations uh, and read the book or whatever. Let's talk about The Haunting of Hill House because I would love to hear what everybody thought um, of any of these adaptations or the book or both. Uh, if you've read the book and watched all three of these adaptations, which one do you prefer? Uh, because I would love to know that too. And as always, if you have any suggestions for future Flicks and Lit videos, please let me know in the comments because I'm always looking for ideas. And that's it. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week and I will talk with you soon. Thank you so much for watching.